today is oil filter change time. Got my Fram Extra Guard PH5 10,000 mile protection, which I don't use the 10,000 miles. I changed the oil on this 1993 Chevy Suburban about every three to 4,000 miles. It says in the manual you can go every seven. I have some Haveline 10W30 motor oil. I'm going to be running seven quarts into this vehicle. That includes the filter. I put some pig mat down. I have a cat litter bucket to catch the oil. And it's just pig mat brand, uh, Universal Leak spill pads designed for oil. And I got my rubber oil change gloves, my socket wrench, and my 14 millimeter socket to take the oil drain plug out. Other than that, let's get started. Okay, the oil is drained. There's the filter. Draining right there. There is my drain plug. And then, let's get you over to where without spilling. That's draining out too. And this cat pan was plenty big, as you can see, for the amount of oil that dumped out of here. And this is what a 4,000 mile oil change looks like because that's about what it's been. Tad under 4,000 miles. Um, the filter holds up perfectly fine. I know a lot of people don't like these filters. They complain about them. They say they're junk. And, you know, I've been using these and I've had no issues. I'm not sponsored by anybody. Um, I've had absolutely zero issues with them. So, and I've used them even when they were the cardboard glued on kind. But yep, this is draining, so I'm going to get all that junk wiped off with some brake clean sprayed on there. Wipe it down, get the plug put back in, take the new filter, put some oil around the rubber O-ring here, or the rubber ring to seal it up, and then I'll put the new filter on, put the drain plug in, then we'll get it filled up with oil. 15 minutes into this oil change of maybe 20, and uh, new filter's on, oil is open. I ended up putting some oil on the new filter and there's the new filter right there same part number as the old one and then the drain plug is back in and then you want to replace the crush washer on that as well so that's gonna to have to be something that you add to your list but you can get an oil change deal for this filter or crush washer and then you can go ahead and get some oil usually you know Menards uh, Advanced Auto, Riley, a lot of times they got oil change specials. Under 30 bucks you can get everything that you need. Or you can take it to the dealership and get charged $150 for an oil change or whatever it is that they charge. Now, I'm going to be pulling this out in a second after I fill up the oil, and then we're going to inspect that oil too. But let's get up to the top, and let's go ahead and add some oil in. Another thing for you to remember is I like to keep cardboard and pig mat and my little tub under here just in case. I'm going to leave this under here until I get the oil completely topped off. Then I'm going to start the vehicle. I want to make sure that there's no leaks. If it is leaking, at least it'll go into the pan or on the cardboard, and I'll be able to find out. All my extra towels here is a just in case. Everything is under there. Don't mind that. That's just a solenoid that's knocking. That has to be replaced. That's for the blend doors. That's another project. So oil's changed. The recommendation on the cap is for 10W30, which is what I put in. I filled it with 7 quarts of oil. That's on 100%. Let's make sure nothing's leaking. 249,905 miles on the odometer and now we're going to watch this oil pressure gauge and make sure that that goes up. If it does not, then it's possible you got the wrong filter on there, not enough oil, or you have something going on inside your engine. You need oil pressure. With no oil pressure, you can damage the engine. So if you notice that it is not rising after you know five to ten seconds, just immediately turn the engine off and then figure out what's going on before you start the vehicle. See how fast that was? Instantaneous. Let's go check for leaks. Not leaking. Everything's good. That oil right there is old stuff right there. So, in fact, we'll verify that that's old stuff. Wipe that off right there. That's from changing the oil out. Everything's sealing up nice. Now be careful when you tighten these on. Some people like to tighten them on with a torque wrench. Same thing with this. You only want to hand tighten the bolt. 
until it's snug. Once you feel it's snug, you're good to go. This, once you feel it's snug, you're good to go. You don't want to keep wrenching at it until you end up twisting this or until you bust the rubber seal. Right here, this rubber seal will pop off. And always make sure there's not another rubber seal. When you take this filter off, make sure this gasket comes with, because if you double gasket that, it will leak and you will end up with problems. And that could also be a key to why you have no oil pressure. But I know I have no leaks and everything's good to go. Now, my step is I like to check the oil and look to see if there's any shiny metal bits or anything going on that could tell me if there's something wrong with the engine. Filter still looks phenomenal. And then, can't tell if that's a metal bit or not. No, it's not. It's just air bubble. And like I said, this pig mat, you might think it's a waste of money, or you might think, oh, why would I want to waste the time putting that down? You know, I just change it. And I don't spill anything. Believe me, I'm extremely cautious about how I do things, and I spill stuff. So pig mat definitely comes in handy, especially if you're just putting cardboard down. Sometimes I put a metal pan down that I have, a big metal tray that I bought at the auto parts store, and then I'll put pig mat over that or newspaper, something to catch the excess oil. It makes cleanup a lot faster. So everything looks good as far as the oil goes. I don't notice anything out of the ordinary. And then everything looks good as far as the filter goes. So the next step is going to be to dump all this into empty containers. Got this. I'm going to dump this into here. I'm going to clean this out with a uh, brake clean. I'm going to make sure that this filter is all wiped off. And then I'm going to take my used oil and filter down to the local auto parts store and they will recycle it for me. Everything is put where it needs to go. Uh, my truck does burn oil. Um, I was down about a quart and a half. So, again, one of the reasons why it was time for the oil change, I always want to check. So, filter is there, cleaned off, used oil, and then my brake clean canisters, and then all my garbage from the job that I just performed. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to check the oil. My stuff, bucket's completely cleaned out. Funnel is completely cleaned out with brake clean, wiped off. My pig mat still using it and I have a container with only about a quart maybe a half a quart of oil in it and then my rubber gloves the pig mat if you get a couple drops of oil or a little bit of oil on it they're reusable so you don't have to toss them right away I, I wait until they're saturated with oil and then I throw them away and dispose of them in the proper way I don't really have a good place to put this but let's check the oil first time I just wipe it off and then Put the stick back in and then I'll check it. Now this is still in the ramps. So it's not going to give me a 100% accurate reading. I have to actually take it off the steps to get the reading the way I need it. But if you can see that, oil is completely filled all the way up to those four dots. Now if you're ever down a little bit or a little bit or a little bit, this is when you're really supposed to add it. When you get down to the add mark. If it's between add and full, you're good. But if you want to add more, you can add a little bit extra. Just never go over full mark. And especially if you change your oil and went way over the full mark, you can actually cause damage to your engine. So you want to be extremely careful. Uh, you don't want the bearings to spin inside the engine and then just crap the engine out. So this I'm going to call done. Put this away. And then I'm going to run all this used oil that I have over to the local auto parts store after I finish putting everything away. All right, I'm going to just rest you right there. And let's check this oil. First time the oil stick gets pulled out. Uh, I can't really get this on camera all that well. But what I'm going to do is I'll bring the camera over here. But you can hear the first time I pulled it out, I just wiped it off. Second time I'm pulling it out. And the truck truck should be on level ground, the car, truck, whatever you're using. And you can see, or can you, if this thing would focus. Anyway, it's it's filled up. So all the way it doesn't want to focus, but you can see the oil jiggling back and forth on all four dots. Now that's between the add and the fill line. If it ever goes above the full line, which is that last fourth dot, which is right about there, a little bit over the full line, like, you know, maybe a half an inch is fine. But if you sit there and have the oil way up the stick like this, then you better take some oil out of there because otherwise you're going to cause severe engine damage. If you're ever checking your oil or you believe that you're burning oil, like I know that this vehicle does some, and I just cannot get it to focus. Um, if it's below that first dot right there, especially on this truck, then it just means you got to add some oil. So you just slowly add a quart of oil 
and maybe another chord until you get to the point where you're within those four dots. So you don't have to be exactly at the fourth dot, but you want to be if, if possible. Let's put this back in, and then we're going to go ahead and take all the used oil down to the local auto parts store and let them recycle it for us. Mission accomplished.